Hey guys, it's September 2nd, 2015, and I'm down here in the balmy, very humid basement shop. And uh, I'm going to do a flea market finds segment tonight. Um, call, I call these flea market finds, but these could be anything from estate sales, uh, flea market, garage sale, yard sale, um, the casual pawn shop buy, um, all kinds of deals. Maybe I'll score something off of eBay, although I, I prefer to sell on eBay. <laughs> Although well, I haven't been active, active on there, but um, needless to say, um, getting much better luck with uh, even the used tool store and the pawn shop. I've been able to score some things there that I could turn around and actually uh, probably put up on eBay. Um, so I'm going to start off tonight. Uh, first, I want to kind of revisit something from one of the past videos. This was a batch of stuff I bought at the tool store. That's this uh, cutter right here. I cleaned this up and I wanted to share my thoughts on this thing. Now as I record this video, I am aware, keenly aware, that I have not even edited and posted the video, uh, including all of the other things that I acquired with this. And so, what, what potentially could happen is by the time this video actually makes it to YouTube someone may have already looked at the the other video that's going to be posted and told me what this is so the fact that I don't really know what this is is because I, I haven't posted I haven't gotten a comment because I haven't posted that yet but I did clean this up and uh, I tried to take this apart but I didn't try very hard because it kind of perplexed me uh, what we've got here is definitely, um, on this end, this, this huge Morse taper, and it looks like I see a number 12, so I'm assuming that's a um, number 12 Morse taper. And this end right here, where it locks in and keys into this part, almost looks like like a, uh, like a uh, shell mill uh, holder. But, what I don't get is, there, there's no hole for a Tommy bar or any way to grab onto this part right here and unscrew it. So I don't understand how this, how this part right here would come off of this. The fact that it keys in like that means it must, but I, I don't know how. I can see where you can put a Tommy bar in here and here. So it looks like this ring, I can see threads down in here. I cleaned this up some, but it's still pretty dirty. I can see threads down in here. So it, it appears clear to me that, you know, you can, you can, rotate this ring independent of this ring and maybe that somehow unlocks this thing so that it will slide off because I can see that there are grooves right here that something rides in it's a interesting thing and then these are the cutters I got a much better look at the cutters I can't tell if those are big carbide cutters or those are just high-speed steel but the more I looked at this the more I began to realize that I'm pretty sure this is actually a special reamer for engine rebuilding work. I think this might even be a ridge reamer or something along those lines. Uh, I think it's called a ridge reamer. Uh, designed to break the, uh, the built up ridge of metal that forms at the top of the cylinder and typically has to be removed prior to uh, honing um, as part of the rebuilding process. Uh, again, I'm not a, I'm not an automotive expert by any means, but I'm just thinking that's what this might be. There's very little clearance here. The only markings I was able to find on this after cleaning it up is right here, other than the shank here where it's marked M R N T O. It looks like this says M R N T C. Millsburg, Pennsylvania, USA, 12. That might be just a holder. On the cutter here, all right here, on the cutter it's marked 7-K-10. There are little Allen head screws right here that looks like you can loosen to remove each one of these cutters, so if you need to replace a cutter. But, um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm leaning towards. So I just thought I'd show this thing because it was so filthy on the original video that I didn't think anybody could really see what the heck this even looked like. 
but I think that's a ridge reamer and I think it's used for uh, engine rebuilding work and it might be so old that it might not be worth scrap alright so our next item is something that I actually didn't even consider buying I didn't even think I was going to end up buying uh, in my lifetime I don't really think um, it's something I'm going to use I may end up reselling it I haven't decided yet um, but I walked into the pawn shop I spotted it in the case and this all started when I spotted a couple of Sterrett V blocks and a couple other um, there was some Morse taper drill bits the Morse taper drill bits he had uh, some pretty high prices on them considering what I tend to buy them for these days <laughs> of course I'm getting pretty good deals on Morse taper drill bits when I come across them anyways um, so we went back and forth on, on the price on the uh, Morse taper uh, not on the on the uh, Starrett V blocks, and the best I could do on those was 25 for the pair. They were in the original Starrett box, and they had the original rod that you can use to connect the two together. Um, not bad, except for the fact that they had quite a bit of surface rust on them. So I said, you know, I've got a pair of no-name V blocks that look like they're in pretty decent shape. So I wasn't in a all fired up, but that got me into the conversation of of you know things that came in he said well how about a drill press and I was like ah, I don't want a big drill press then he showed me the drill press for those of you who don't know what this is this is a do more uh, this is a do more high speed sensitive drill this particular one uh, I've seen this on eBay several times this is a catalog number 16-021 um, 115 volt of course. Here's the interesting thing. This is a uh, top speed of 17,000 RPM. 17,000 RPM. That is humming. And he, re he, he didn't really know the significance of the Dumore name and its value. He just went on, he was just operating on the assumption that because it was in a machinist's shop and it looked well made that it, it had some value to it and that's why he had 99 bucks on it and I'll tell you what if you want to buy one of these in good used condition the only thing I can find wrong with it is there's two holes right here which I I'm not sure if those are by design supposed to be there or if this was, you know, the table would swivel out of position and that's a couple of oopses. But, anyways, this, um, what I was saying, $99 is a f very fair price for this. And I actually got an even better deal than that because I was willing to walk away and come back. There's also a, uh, like a, a, almost like a, dent or something on the hand wheel right here so it's not mint and the first time I went there and we went back and forth on price I had agreed to a price and then I said the only thing is it's conditional on me hearing it run and when he fired it up what ended up happening was um, it was wavering in speed and I couldn't figure out whether or not there was something wrong with it, or whether or not there was a voltage fluctuation happening there in, in the uh, in the pawn shop, it just something didn't seem right, and so I got a little scared. But it didn't sound bad. It just it was fluctuating in speed, and I actually posted on the the Practical Machinist website. Uh, I you know asked for somebody's inf you know who has one of these if, if they've experienced that, and I was told that. Um, one of the thoughts was that be, that they, they they theorized that this had been sitting for a while, and that what may have happened is that the uh, grease and the bearings may have been kind of gummy, and it may have taken a little bit of running for it to warm the bearings up and get the grease redistributed. It's just a theory, but I noticed the longer I let it run, the better it seemed to run. So eventually. Uh, so initially I passed because I wasn't sure and then after uh, hearing people talk about 
you know, what to look for and what to watch out for on these things. I didn't hear any of the really bad noises that might indicate that the bearings of the brushes were completely junk. So I went back and uh, decided that it was still there. And I said, well, you know what, since it's still here, and I feel better about it than I did before, I'll pop on it at the agreed price that we had already set. And then, just because he, I guess he was in a good mood that day, he uh, dropped another 10 bucks off of it. So, I got a real sweet deal on this sucker. So, let's give this thing a listen. <laughs> It's taking a little bit of time to come up to full speed. Here it comes. And you see it just kicked down in speed. So that's what makes me think that there's maybe something going on here that isn't quite coper, kosher, uh, copesthetic, or kosher, or however you want to say it. So I don't know. So one of the things that was like recommended to me was that I uh, actually check the. Um, check the brushes in this thing and I couldn't do that there in the in the pawn shop because I just know the limitations of what, what they're gonna let you get away with plugging something in here and it runs one thing taking it apart on the bench is another thing and the problem is my fear was that if I like you know open this up and you know a spring went flying Next thing you know, it would be a whole horrible deal. So I wasn't about to uh, run the risk of having something horrible happen there. So let's see what's left in there for brushes. One thing they did warn me about was they said, make sure that you put them in the same way they came out. In other words, you know, correct side and everything. So that's got about, uh, well, maybe a quarter of an inch, a little, maybe three eighths of an inch left of length. I don't know how long these are when you get them originally. And then it's got a very distinct curve to it, so you got to make sure that it goes in correctly. Look at that, there's almost like a part number right on top of it. Once the spring goes in. Then this little funky cap. That one doesn't look too bad. Let's check this one out. Better size screwdriver. Same size. And again, I'm going to put these, put this back in. Making sure that that curve is going the right way, oriented the right way. So the only other thing I could think of is a bearing issue. But, you know, it doesn't sound like a bad bearing. Could be wrong. This is the kind of thing that if I decided to sell it on eBay, I would probably post a video of it running so somebody could see firsthand exactly what I'm seeing and then that way they know what they're bidding on I mean I don't even know how hard it would be to change those bearings in there I mean that's quiet as a church mouse when you turn it so that's what makes me think it's not necessarily a bearing issue. What else is interesting is I think this says that this is AC-DC. So I don't know where you would get 120 volt DC to run this motor, but maybe in a laboratory? 
I don't know. Well, let's see whether or not I ruined it. Yeah, pretty much the same way it was. The other thing I did check on this uh, while I was at the pawn shop was I did ask him for the smallest drill bit he had, which wasn't as small as I wished it was, and I put the drill bit in there, he asked me if I wanted something to drill, and I said, no, that's actually fine, and instead what I did was I took a, a white card of paper, held it behind the drill bit as it was running, and looked really closely at the tip of the drill bit to see how bad it was oscillating, if at all and it wasn't. It looked really good. So it didn't look like there was much run out. So I think before I close out this little short video, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to find myself one of those tiny drill bits that I picked up that I had no idea what I was going to ever use them for and drill a tiny hole in something. Alright, so just grab something quick here had this little envelope right here, Union Twist Drills. It says number 55, it's catalog number 236. There's actually some other stuff in here. A couple of tiny taps. But it does look like these drill bits might be number 55. So that's a pretty small drill bit. The other thing I learned about this, uh, this drill press from a hobby site, apparently this is a really popular drill press with, with model makers. Um, and I could see why. So they basically talk about, you know, how well guys who use Dremels mounted in stands uh, as a substitute for a miniature drill press. And, and what this particular guy was pointing out was he was pointing out that, you know, as long as it's in good condition, an old used do more DP like this one, is just a completely different animal than any um, Dremel setup. And then he talked about scoring deals on these and he mentioned how sometimes you come across one of these for sale and apparently this chuck that's on here right now I think is a tiny Jacobs chuck, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so I was down here last night and was just getting ready to demonstrate this drill. Started talking about the chucks and uh, the battery on the camera died. Anyways, what I started to say was um, the chuck that's on my drill right here is a Cushman chuck. Uh, I've I've known uh, I've heard of the name Cushman as far as chucks for lathes, you know, three jaw, four jaw, that kind of thing. But I didn't know that they also made small drill chucks like this. Um, and of course, everybody knows Jacobs and, and of course there's Albrecht and, and the knockoffs. But anyways, um, one of the guys who, uh, who authored a really nice article on his hobby website regarding, you know, scouting these drills said that uh, apparently these drills were also shipped with another chuck. I forgot the name of that chuck, but there's actually a very nice, uh, I think it might be a keyless chuck that was available as an option apparently on some of these. And that is a uh, real bonus if you find a uh, do more drill press with one of those chucks on it and it's in good condition. All right, so I got the drill on there, and basically, with a, a drill bit this small spinning at that high of an RPM, if, if you've got even the slightest bit of run out that's going to cause the drill bit to wobble, uh, you, you're just asking for a high possibility of breakage. So I am not positive, but I think a good test of whether or not this puppy is, uh, you know, a good deal or whatever, would be to uh, maybe cut a hole in some steel. Let's see. Let me find a piece of true scrap. All right, just grab me some hearing protection because I got a feeling that uh, this might be noisy once it starts cutting. All right, so this is like quarter-inch steel. So, I might be asking too much to try and drill through this with this little thing, but I figure the worst case scenario is I just break a uh, drill bit. So, 
So unlike a conventional drill press where you actually have the, uh, you know, the, a handle that brings the head down, the head is actually basically put into a fixed position. Slippery sucker. There we go. Do it. Wish me luck. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That, that hole's tiny, and it's going through this pretty thick piece of steel without breaking the drill bit. Hmm. I don't know when I'm ever going to want to drill holes that small, but I don't know. Maybe I should hold on to this for the time being. That's interesting. I wonder if this is the original chuck key. Now this is a Jacobs chuck key, so I'm assuming there was, since Cushman made their own chucks, I'm assuming they also uh, made a uh, chuck key to go with it. Alright, well, I would say that was a successful test of the Do More high-speed sensitive drill press.